जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बाला गिरिद बरधारी गोपी जन बाला गिरिद बरधारी यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना थेरा वन यमुन थेरा वन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बाल गिरिद बरधारी गोपी जान बाला गिरिद बरधारी यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन थेरा वन चारी यमुन थेरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रेमानंदे हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया नारायणम नमस्कृत्यम नरम चैवानरोतमम दैविम सरस्वतीम व्यासम ततो जयमुदेरायत नस्तप्रायेशु वबद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तमा श्लोके भक्तिर भवती नष्टकी सो वी आर ऑन टेक्स्ट नंबर सिक्स ऑफ द प्रेयर्स ऑफर्ड बाय क्वीन कुंती यतारिशि केशा कलेन देवकी Kam se na rudati chiram tu charpita. Vimo chita ham cha sahatma javibo. Tvayeva na te na mahur vipadganat. Translation. O Rishikesh. Master of the senses and Lord of lords, you have released your mother Devaki, who was long imprisoned and distressed by the envious King Kamsa, and me and my children from a series of constant dangers. So this is verse number twenty-three in chapter eight of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Queen Kunti is remembering how Lord Krishna had come, rather, Lord Krishna had delivered his mother and father, of course also Vasudev and Devaki. They had been imprisoned by the envious King Kamsa, right, it's mentioned, Kalena Devaki. Kala, meaning envy. And this is the quality of Kamsa, envious. But devotees, we want to be free of envy. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, because you are not envious of Arjuna, I am speaking this knowledge to you. And we see also in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the uh, the second verse of the first chapter of the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasa Dev has written his invocation. The second verse is Dharma Projita Kaitavo Traparamo Nirmat Saranam Satam. All right? Nirmat Saranam Satam. That if we want to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to give up envy. Envy is the quality of the material world. But we are practicing Krishna consciousness. We want to 
develop the spiritual world. We should have the spiritual atmosphere in our Krishna conscious temples and in our association with the devotees. There should be no envy. The material world, everyone is envious of each other. So this was also explained when we were talking the other morning about Dhruva Maharaj. Narada Muni had come to Dhruva Maharaj and he was speaking to him. He was saying to Dhruva Maharaj that we should be happy to see people who are on a higher position than us. And we should make friends with those who are our equals. And we should be kind and compassionate to those who are below us or subordinate to us. That is the proper mood of a devotee. But in the material world, people behave in just the opposite way. They don't like to see people who are above them. They don't like to have equals. They don't make friends with the equals. And they exploit those who are below them. So that's the material atmosphere. It's not a pleasant place. And that's why Lord Krishna describes the material world as Dukalayam Ashaswatam. It's a temporary place of misery. So much suffering is there in the material world. So we have to give up envy. And how to give up, how to get free of envy? We have to do it by practicing devotional service, by hearing and by chanting. And in this way, gradually, we can purify the heart. That, that envy is one of the things which is there in the heart. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore says, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. We have to cleanse the heart. The heart is described to be like the mirror, and, but we have to clean it. The mirror has become covered with so many anartas, unwanted things. Calm, crowd, lobe, moda, matsarya. Envy is there. This envy, this has to be overcome. We should rather appreciate others. We should be caring. We speak about devotee care. We are trying to develop that mood in our Krishna conscious society. Srila Prabhupada showed always a lot of care for the devotees. He was concerned about their welfare. So it's important for us to try to develop these qualities also in our practice of Krishna consciousness. And how much we are progressing in Krishna consciousness, we can understand by how much we are getting free of envy and how much we are having loving relationships with the devotees. Right? Loving relationships are described in Rupa Goswami's Upadesh Amrita. Dadati pratigrinati guyam makyati prichati bhongte bojayate chaiva sadvidam priti lakshanam. Priti lakshanam means loving exchanges between one devotee and another. Just like we offer everyone prasadam. We come to the temple, everyone should get prasad. Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter actually not long before he departed from the world. And he wrote it to all the centers, every center. He wrote that anyone who comes to the center, 
they should get prasad. No one should be told, oh, there's no prasad. He said, Krishna is not a poor man. He will provide for everyone. So that's Prabhupada's loving care that he wanted. And Prabhupada even described what he wanted to be distributed. He said that you should make some halava, you should have something like that, some pakora, something. He said, but there must be some prasad for everyone. And uh, Srila Prabhupada was very particular like that himself. He liked to always give people prasad. I remember I was in the Calcutta temple. Prabhupada com had come there to his hometown and he was giving classes and he had us distribute. He had, you know, we were not so efficient that we could prepare prasadam ourselves, but Prabhupada had us purchase some sweets from a Bengali sweet shop and he would distribute the sweets to everyone. He liked to see everyone get some kind of prasada. And of course, in Mayapur it was very important. He said no one should go hungry within, what, five kilometers of the temple? So that kind of caring. Uh, it's important for us to not to be envious of others. And the, we want to develop the spiritual atmosphere. And then we can go on to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. So Lord Krishna, he released Devaki from the prison house and he also saved Kunti and her children from a series of constant dangers. So the next verse continues we're going to hear about these different dangers which uh, Lord Krishna saved Kunti and her sons from. You can see verse number 7. Vishan Mahatne Purushada Darshanad Asat Asat Sabaya Vanarasa Kretsrata Mride Mride Neka Maharatastrata Dronyastrata Chasma Hare Birakshata Translation, my dear Krishna, your lordship has protected us from a poison cake, oh. from a great fire, from cannibals, from the vicious assembly, from sufferings during our exile in the forest, and from the battle where great generals fought. And now you have saved us from the weapon of Ashwatthama. So Kun, Kun, Queen Kunti is remembering all the different incidents which her and her sons had been through and how Lord Krishna had been always there to help them and protect them. First of all, she talks about a poison cake. So. The Kauravas, you know, Dhritarashtra's sons, were always envious of the Pandavas. There was constant conflicts. Y you know, young men, they always compete with each other. Who's the best, you know? Everyone wants to be the best. Just like when we were at school, you know, they have they give mark. You do examinations and you get marks. And someone gets the the, the prize. They're the best. You know the top marks. Or someone's the best cricketer. Or someone's the you know whatever. They they 
people like to be the best. So the Pandavas and the Kauravas, they were being trained by Dronacharya. And Dronacharya had come to teach them the military arts. And the Kauravas were always trying to compete. We wanted to be better than the Pandavas. But somehow the Pandavas were always better than them. So there was always some bitterness and envy in their dealings. One of the big problems, of course, was Bhim. Bhim was saying that he was very powerful. And as stated in Bhagavad Gita, he could perform Herculean tasks. And so he, he had one problem, however, though, and that was he had a voracious appetite. <laughs> he could eat a lot. And uh, the Kauravas knew his nature, so they took advantage of it to arrange for a poison cake to be given to Bhima. They, g they made this very special cake. You know, when, w when there's a cake, then the devotees are always eager, you know, give me a piece of cake, let's have a piece of cake. So Bhim saw the cake and he was eager. he ate the whole thing. But the Kauravas had put poison in the cake. And Bhim took the cake and he ate the whole thing. He was affected by the poison. So the Kauravas, they saw Bhima had he'd fallen unconscious because of the poison. So they thought, let's get rid of him now. And they took his body and they threw it into one pond. Uh, but in that pond, there were some fish. Th there were some poison fish. And these poison fish came and they bit Bhima's body. And the, the poison from the fish counteracted the poison from the cake. And in this way, Bhima was saved. The Kauravas had tried to kill him, but they had failed. So this was a pastime of the poison cake. It shows the kind of things which people will do when they're envious of each other. Then another incident described as a great fire. So it happened that the Kauravas prepared one house for the Pandavas. And this house was built out of shellac. And the nature of shellac was that just a little flame, a little light, and the whole thing would go up in flames. The whole thing would be burned to ashes. So they built the whole house out of shellac. And they told the Pandavas that, you know, we've made this very nice house. I think you and your mother, and, you know, you should go there and stay there. So the Pandavas, they were under the care of Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was their guardian. Their own father, Pandu, had died. So they were left under the care of Dhritarashtra. And Dhritarashtra was telling them, we built this nice house. My sons have prepared a very nice house for you. You go there and you can stay there for some time. Go there. So they thought, well, He's our father, he's our guardian, we should go there, we have to do what he says. But fortunately, Uncle Vidur was there, and Uncle Vidur warned them, be very careful, that you know this must be some, there's some kind of evil intentions there. So the Pandavas went there to the house, but they understood that there's something not right here. Why they're, you know, they've always been so nasty with us. Why they're giving us this house to live in? There must be some danger. So they arranged to make a tunnel so that if there was ever any problem, they could escape through the tunnel. And they built a secret tunnel to get out from the house. So it happened one night that another lady came and she also had five sons. 
and they 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 were looking for shelter and they came to the house and they asked Kunti and her sons could we have some shelter in your home and Kunti was appreciative Pandavas had no objection why not the ladies coming with her sons let them stay for the night and they all came and they st they gave them a room in the house and it turned out that that night that was the night when they had come and set fire to the whole house they arranged to burn the whole house and um, very quickly the whole house was ablaze the Pandavas however they had made the secret tunnel and they could get out through the tunnel but the the elderly lady the other lady who'd come there with her five sons they were caught in the house they could not escape and they burned to death in the house so after the house was burned down people came and they found the ashes and they saw there's the ashes the remains of these people one lady and five other young men and they thought this must be the Pandavas and Kunti they're dead so they announced to everyone all oh, Queen Kunti and the five Pandavas have all been burned and burned to death there's been a fire in the house they're all dead and Dhritarashtra and his sons they pretended to mourn oh how terrible oh very sad but actually in their heart they were thinking very good at last we've got rid of them they did not know that actually Pandavas are still alive they had escaped and the, the Pandavas they didn't announce to anybody they kept it secret for some time and everyone thought they're dead look ashes are there their bodies are there of course later on it happened there was the Swayamvar ceremony for Draupadi that Maharaj Draupada wants to get a husband for his daughter now Draupadi was a very special woman she was not an ordinary woman she was from the higher planets and every ma whenever men would see her the, just the aroma the fragrance of her body would be so attractive it would fascinate men and they would just be oh, they would be so captivated by her she would she had so much beauty feminine charm that it was bewildering to the minds of ordinary men and you have so many Jayadrata for example he tried to take her for his own wife and she fought with him anyway uh, when it came time for the Swayamvar ceremony then Arjuna turned there turned up there but he did not reveal himself as Arjuna he came in disguise so at that time Karna also wanted to compete now Karna he is also son of Kunti but nobody knew that Karna is actually the eldest son of Kunti it was a secret at the time of his birth Kunti was not yet married and so she took the bo the child and put the child on a boat and put the boat down the river now that boat was then found by one sudra man and he found the child he took the child he adopted it he and his wife brought up the child and in this way Karn grew up in a sudra family but although he grew up in a sudra family he had very powerful qualities and he was a very great warrior he was very expert in firing arrows and he also wanted to compete in the art 
in the archery contest. But Draupadi rejected him, said, no, this competition is only for Kshatriyas. I cannot accept any Sudra man as my husband. So Karna was insulted in this way. So he had an, a bitterness towards Kunti, which came out later on. But anyway, the archery contest, Arjuna was required to pierce the eye of the fish that there was a revolving wheel, and above the revolving wheel was one fish. And the archer, the, in the competition, they had to pierce the eye of a fish. But at the same time, they were not allowed to look directly. They had to look at the reflection on the ground or in the water. And in this way, looking down, fire the arrow up to pierce the eye of a fish. So it was a very difficult challenge. This was what was required to win the hand of Draupadi. And Karn could have done it, but Draupadi rejected him because she said, no, this man is from Sudra background. I cannot take him as a husband. But Arjuna, he came, and of course he was successful, and he took the hand of Draupadi and so Draupadi was taken as Arjuna's wife. And that was when they, they, they were known that, oh, the Pandavas are alive, they're not dead. Everyone was thinking they had all died. But at the time of the Swayamvara ceremony, Arjuna revealed that actually we're not dead. We're all here. So, of course, it was a very sad news for Dhritarashtra and his 100 sons. So then the vicious assembly, it happened that the Pandavas had taken Draupadi for their wife. Arjuna had gone back home with Draupadi and he announced to his mother that, Mother, I have won a prize. And Kunti said, Oh, very good. Whatever you've won, you must share with your brothers. And then, oh, that, that was a shock, that, oh, I have to share my wife with my brothers. Anyway, it was arranged, it was agreed, and Vyas also came, and Vyas confirmed that, the, yes, you can do this, this is not against religious principles, and it's actually ordained that you should all be married to Draupadi. So the five brothers all married Draupadi, and naturally the Kauravas were very envious that they have such a beautiful wife. So they called a gambling match, and the Kshatriyas cannot refuse when they're challenged. When there's ever a challenge, the Kshatriyas they cannot refuse. That would be cowardly. So they were challenged to the game of dice, but the dice were loaded. The, it was not a fair game of dice, but the, there were special dice which were loaded in the favor of the Pandava, of the Kauravas. And so they, they engaged in the, in the game of dice, they lost all of their wealth, and they lost everything. So it came to a point, they said, you still have your wife. You can bet your wife. And they were challenged. They could not refuse that, all right, we have to bet the wife. And they lost. And then the Korava said, now your wife is no more your wife. Now we're taking her. She's our property. And they brought Draupadi. And they brought her. And they wanted to see her naked. And her husbands were sitting there and they could do nothing. Maharaj Yudhisthira would not allow. He said, no, you cannot. We have agreed. According to the codes of Kshatriya, we cannot do anything. We have lost. And they brought Draupadi. And she was actually in her menstrual period at the time. And still they brought her. And they tried to disrobe her. And they began to rip off her cloth. At first, Draupadi was holding. 
She was holding on to the cloth herself. She was trying to save her chastity. So she was holding on to the cloth. But what could she do with so many men? People like Karn, because Karn was very jealous of her. He hated that she had rejected him when, he, when the archery contest took place. So Karn was there, and Dushasan, he was also, they were both trying to rip off Draupadi Sari. And she was fighting, trying to hold it. But she saw it was helpless. So finally, she just surrendered to Krishna. And she put both her hands up in the air. And she called out, Hey, Govinda! And when she put her hands in the air and she called out the name of the Lord, then at that time, then Lord Krishna came and he protected her. He came in the form of the unlimited sari. And in this way, Draupadi's chastity was protected. The, the Kauravas were trying to take off the cloth, but it was more and more and more cloth. There was no end. They saw it is impossible. It is not possible for us to disrobe her. So in this way, Lord Krishna was protecting his devotee, the great Draupadi. She showed her chastity by surrendering completely to Lord Krishna. Hmm? So th this, of course, was a great test. But she showed her chastity and why she's very dear to Lord Krishna. And of course, later on, Lord Krishna arranged for all of these people to get their reward, get to get their punishment, the suitable punishment for their sinful efforts in trying to disgrace Draupadi. So, again, more gambling took place. And this time, the d arrangement was whoever lost, they would go into exile for 12 years. So the Pandavas lost again, and they had to go into exile for 12 years. And the agreement was after 12 years exile, then one year incognito, where nobody knew where they were or what they were doing. And if they were discovered, then they would have to go into exile again for 12 years. So in this way, the Kauravas were trying to do so many evil things to the Pandavas. And of course, the, whatever happens to the Pandavas, it will be very painful for their mother, Queen Kunti, who is taking care of her five sons. So. Anyway, the Pandavas, they had to go into exile. They had to go into exile and for 12 years they were living in the forest. During that time, Maharaj Yudhisthira was practicing dice because he'd been losing, he'd been playing the dice and losing. He did not know, of course, the dice were not, they were not fair. It was not fair. It was a dishonest battle, but still Maharaj Yudhisthira was practicing in that way. And then during the, uh, during the incognito at that time, Arjuna, he had a curse against him. He had been cursed to become a eunuch. So he took that time, that opportunity to be a eunuch during that one period. He'd been cursed because he would not satisfy one heavenly lady who was attracted by him. Because this heavenly lady already had a relationship with, Mahara, with Arjuna's own father. So he said, I, you're my mother. I cannot have a relationship with you. So because he would not satisfy this heavenly woman, she cursed him that you become a eunuch. And so Arjuna, during that one year of incognito, he was playing the part of a, a eunuch, and he was teaching Maharaj Virat. He was teaching his the, the children of Mah Maharaj Virat dancing. And it happened at that time 
that Arjuna had to use his military powers because there was he, Maharaj Virat was attacked. The son of Maharaj Virat was attacked by Duryodhan and the Kauravas. So Arjuna came to help and he defeated them easily and sent them away. And then Maharaj Virat offered his daughter to Arjuna. And, but Arjuna said, no, no, this girl is like my daughter. I cannot take her for a wife. But she, he said, she can marry my son. So Uttara was married to Arjuna's son, Abhimanu. And in this way, Uttara went to live with Arjuna. And, but, of course, there was more problems because Uttara had conceived a child after her marriage with Abhimanu, she conceived a child. And then battle of Kurukshetra came. And after the battle of Kurukshetra, you have Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama, the son of Drona. Now Drona had been killed in the battle. Of course, in a, li a little trickery was involved there in killing Drona. Drona was so powerful that Practically, the Pandavas could not defeat him. He was their guru. He was their teacher. And they were trying to fight him. But they could not defeat Drona. So then Lord Krishna gave them a trick. He told them, tell him Ashwatthama is dead. And of course, Maharaj Yudhisthira, he doesn't like to tell any lies. He's known for always being honest. He never told a lie. He said, how can I lie? He said, no, you have to tell them. Tell, you have to tell them Ashwatthama is dead. If you tell them, they will know it's true. If someone else tells, they will, if I tell them, Krishna, if I tell them, they will know it maybe not be true because I sometimes trick people. And Krishna is a Brijbasi. Brijbasis often don't tell the truth, right? So anyway, Lord Krishna wanted Yudhisthira to tell. But Yudhisthira thought, how can I lie? No. But then they said, all right, just look. There's an elephant, Ashwatthama. Kill the elephant, right? They said, Ashwatthama, the elephant, is dead. You see? So when Drona heard Ashwatthama is dead, then Drona thought, then what? I have no more purpose in my living. And so he sat down, he took samadhi, and when he was in samadhi, then they beheaded him. So this way they, they killed Drona, and they could go on in the battle, to win the battle. So anyway, after the battle, Ashwatthama was very angry, and he wanted that none of the descendants of the Kaurava should live. He wanted they should all die. And he went in the night, and he killed the five sons of the Pandavas. Draupadi had, con had delivered five children who were all young men, and they were there sleeping in the night after the battle. And, and Ashwatthama came there in the night, and he beheaded them. He killed them all in their sleep. So it was a very cowardly, un un uh, an improper manner to go and fight the sons of the Pandavas. But Ashwatthama did like that. And when he did like that, he ran away. But Arjuna chased after him and captured him and brought him back. And they brought him back to Draupadi because Draupadi was grieving. Her five sons had all been killed. And they brought Ashwatthama before her. But she showed her womanly nature. She, she said, no, no, he is the son of our guru. Drona was our guru, and he is the son of our guru. He is the representative of our guru. We should not harm him. But he had done such a sinful activity. We have to punish him. We cannot let him get away with it. So Lord Krishna was there, Bhima was there, and they both wanted to kill him. They thought, what to do? That if we kill him, then it will be very bad for his mother. Ashwatthama's mother is still living, and she will be 
if she knows her son is to be killed, then it will be very painful. Her husband is already dead, and if we kill her son, it will be very painful for her. What to do? But we, ha we have to punish him. We cannot let, let him go without punishment for what he has done. Such a heinous, active action. So then Arjuna took his sword and he cut the jewel off his head. He cut, his, cut off his hair. And this, and this way, he, he, it's as good as death while he's still living. So he, they cut off the jewel from his head and they cut off his hair and then they sent him away. And in this way, Ashwatthama was living. But then he still had some power. Again, he released another, Ash, another uh, Brahmastra weapon, this time at Uttara, because he knew Uttara was carrying a child in her womb and he wanted to kill that child. So he released a Brahmastra weapon. But Lord Krishna, uh, Uttara, being a great devotee, she came to Lord Krishna, Pahi Pahi Mahayogin, Deva Deva Jagatpati. That there's no one but you who can save me from this world of birth and death. Uttara prayed to Krishna that let my body be burned to ashes. That doesn't matter. But please protect the child in my womb. Don't let that child die. So, quite a difference from ladies today, you know, sometimes people today, you know, in the uncultured age of Kali Yuga, women go and they have abortions, they kill the babies in the womb, but here Uttara is praying, I will let me die, but don't let my baby die. Let the child live. So Lord Krishna, expanded himself in the womb of Uttara and protected that child. And that child, of course, was the grandson of Arjuna. This is Maharaj Parikshit. And Maharaj Parikshit went on to become the ruler. After Lord Krishna disappeared from the world, then it came time for the Pandavas also to retire. They all went to the Himalayas. But before they went to the Himalayas, they enthroned this grandson of Arjuna, Maharaj Parikshit. They made him as the emperor. And while he was ruling, the personality of Kali could no longer exhibit his influence. Maharaj Parikshit was such a powerful ruler. He could protect the people from the age of Kali. So Lord Krishna protected them from the weapon of Ashwatthama and the great battle where the generals fought. The, of course, it's a battle of Kurukshetra. So, so many sufferings, so many difficulties they had undergone. They were saved from all of these different situations by the grace of Lord Krishna. A devotee always understands, he always gives the credit to Krishna. But at the same time, if Krishna wants us to, to die, then we don't mind to die. That is surrender. They, they have the Bengali saying, Mare Krishna Rakeke. Yes, if Krishna wants to kill someone, nobody can save him. And if Krishna wants someone to live, nobody can kill him. So we live by the grace of Krishna. Queen Kunti understood this and she's offering this prayer to Lord Krishna that you saved us from so many dangers any one of these dangers, it could have been the death of Kunti and the Pandavas. But somehow they overcame all of these different attempts on their life and they're still living. So certainly their duty is 
to surrender more and more to Lord Krishna. The more there are dangers and the more there are difficulties, the more the devotee becomes attached to Lord Krishna. This is explained here. Let me show you here this. Uh, have lost the, the slide which was supposed to be there. Anyway, there I will go back to the other text. Here we see K Queen Kunti's mood in meeting all these difficulties. This is a famous verse which is often quoted by devotees. Usually if there's any troubles and difficulties, oh, we, have, we, we wonder why is this happening to me? But here you can see the mood of Queen Kunti. She's saying, let there be calamities. Let there be difficulties, that she's praying to Krishna. Let there be troubles, right? We can chant, Vipada Shantuta Shasvat, Tatra Tatra Jagad Guru, Bhavato Darshanam Yachat, Apunar Bhava Darshanam, Queen Kunti is saying, I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again, so that we could see you again and again. For seeing you means that we will no longer see repeated birth and deaths. So this is the mood of Queen Kunti, she, the vipada, the calamities. She said, let them come, more and more, I don't mind, because they're, they're helping me to be, remember Krishna more. Yesterday, last night, we were talking about the lotus, how the lotus flower was helping Kun, Kun, Queen Kunti and all of us to remember Krishna. Now, she's going on to talk about calamities also help us to remember Krishna to take more shelter of Krishna. The more we have difficulties and troubles, it's an opportunity for us to come closer to Krishna, to remember him more, to chant the holy name more. Sometimes in the, in the early years of our movement, there were difficulties, there were challenges, and Srila Prabhupada would write to the devotees, he said, when our movement is being attacked, he said, then all of the devotees must be very careful 
to strictly follow the four regulative principles and to chant at least 16 rounds. And he said, that will protect us from any dangers. So this is true. This was true in terms of the, our, our whole society. And it's also true in an individual sense. That each of us, as individuals, if we are having difficulties, we are having problems and challenges, troubles, what do we have to do? We have to very strictly follow four regulative principles. And we have to chant the holy name every day, minimum 16 rounds. That will protect us from all the problems of the material world. It is very powerful. That is uh, like, just like vaccination, you know, they were having, they were telling people get vaccinated, you know, vaccination will protect you from the disease. So our vaccination for regulative principles, 16 rounds. That's the best vaccination. That will protect you from anything the material energy can throw against us. We have to have faith in this Krishna conscious process. It is not just simply, oh, initiation. What is important is that we follow the process. And the process is based on these four principles and the chanting of the holy name. And this helps us to counteract the material energy. And sometimes it happens. Maya is very powerful, can give us a lot of trouble. You can have difficulties, family difficulties, economic difficulties, employment difficulties, health difficulties. So many different issues can be there. But if we take shelter of the chanting of the holy name and the regulated principles, maya cannot touch us. You will you'll be safe. So Queen Kunti understood this and she t she's taking this opportunity. She's praying to Krishna. She's not saying to Krishna, Oh Krishna, why did you let all these troubles come on me? I am your devotee. Why did it happen? She's no, she's saying, let it all happen again and again because it's an opportunity for me to come closer to you. And we want we all want to be to come close to Krishna, right? <laughs> right? So you're willing to undergo all the calamities, right? You're not afraid of any calamities. We, pr we, pr we pray to Krishna. The, the difficulties, they help us to come close to Krishna. A comfortable life of sense gratification, it's not very good for a devotee. We, we, we have to accept some difficult... That's why the Vedic system is that as you get older, Vanaprastha is there. You see? We don't just simply remain in family life, but we go on to the retired life. Vanaprastha. And Vanaprastha means, again, accepting difficulties. What do they do? Vanaprastha, in the past, they would go to the forest and live in the forest. They would give up being the king. They would give up the whole empire. They'd go put their sons in, char oh, in the throne and they'd go off. I was telling you, the Pandavas. The Pandavas, after the bat they, they were ruling the world, Lord Krishna, however, disappeared from the world. And when Lord Krishna left the world, then the Pandavas thought, then it's time for us also to retire. They put Parikshit on the throne and they all went to Himalayas. Went to the, in other words, Vanaprastha. They went to live in the Himalayas and to leave the body, to leave the world there. So we also have to prepare ourselves. We accept some austerities. 
we have to accept the difficulties of life, not run away from the difficulties. We have to, the, the difficulties make us stronger in Krishna consciousness. The more there's difficulties, the stronger we become in Krishna consciousness. So Lord Krishna, uh, he ar sometimes arranges like that. It's described in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna said, when I am especially merciful to someone, then I take away all of their opulence. Right? You want special mercy of Krishna? He said, I take away all of their opulence. And th then in that helpless condition, then they surrender to me. So that is the special mercy of Lord Krishna. Of course, not too many people want that special mercy. <laughs> but it's there. It sometimes, you, sometimes Krishna just arranges it to force us that Krishna has done this to me. Now I have to fully commit myself to Lord Krishna. I have to take full shelter. Manasa deho geho yoki chumor arpila duapade nanda kishor. I have given up everything my home, my family, society, everything. I have just taken shelter of the son of Nanda Maharaj. He is our only shelter. If whatever I have, I have given to him. So Krishna consciousness is training us to develop detachment from the material world. Not to become more attached, but to become detached from the material world. Wherever there is genuine bhakti, then it is followed by two things, right? Jnana and Vairag, right. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana Yati Suvairagyam Jnanam Chayat Ahaitukam That wherever there is genuine bhakti, there will also develop transcendental knowledge and detachment from this material world. That's the sign of genuine devotion. Just like when you eat food, when you eat food, we don't, you don't, nobody can say, oh, you've had enough to eat. It's up to every individual how much we eat. We know when we're satisfied and when we're not. In the same way, when you practice bhakti, you will also know, you will feel satisfaction. You will feel devotion. You will feel detachment from the material world. Comes about naturally, without any trouble. You don't have to make a, 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 you don't have to be in agony or suffering. It, just naturally, we can give it up by taking shelter of Lord Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Is there any question? Any question, anybody? Yes, Maharaji? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for again another nectar. Um, Maharaj, re regarding the last verse of Kunti, where she is asking, uh, let Vipada Taha Santu Shashwat. So, again and again. but. You know, nobody would want Draupadi to undergo that torment again and again, right? So, if she is speaking for herself, it is fine. But then there will be a lot of collateral damage when she is asking for difficulties. Others also will get involved in the difficulties. And how <laughs> can we pray like that? <laughs> <laughs> You're not yet ready for Vanaprastha. <laughs> I'm not going to play with that. <laughs> Your time hasn't come yet, Manaji. No, uh, 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 
Marad, vanaprastha means what? Like Vanaprastha today means taking shelter of the Krishna consciousness movement. It means, you know, you're n we're not able to go to the forest because the forest practically, you know, <laughs> they're, they're not there anymore. The forest <laughs> practically destroyed. Where's the forest here? No forest here in the Middle East. But you go to the ISKCON center, you take shelter of the holy dams. Many devotees have gone to Holy Dham, they're living there, and they do service there. So that is what it actually means. Right? We take shelter of Lord Krishna. That is your retirement. We don't give, we retire from the material duties, but we don't retire from spiritual duties. Your spiritual duties are always there throughout the life. And it should be intensified at the end of life. We want to increase your spiritual duties as we get older. That is the Vedic system. That is why Grihastha life is followed by Vanaprastha. And then, you know, first retirement and then renunciation. And so it's not to live comfortably all life and just wait for t death to come. No, we have to prepare for the next life. And we prepare for the next by taking more shelter of the Krishna consciousness movement. You go to the Holy Dham and do service. And in that spiritual atmosphere, your life can become enriched. You understand? Ma Maharaj, but... Uh isn't this also a kind of vanaprastha here? We have the temple here, we are serving the deities here. And well, it, de it we depends how much you're absorbed here. How much are you engaged here? And if it's once a week, it's not enough. <laughs> okay. We want full-time commitment. As you, Krishna said, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. You think of Krishna one day a week, Krishna will think of you one day a week. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <Mary. laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, about the calamities, some t you have very rightly said that we should accept those austerities, accept those difficulties as a plan of Krishna. Maharaj, sometimes difficulties may also arise because of our carelessness. If it arises because of our carelessness, should we accept that and as a plan of Krishna and accept that austerity and difficulties or should we work on our own so that we are not careless or mitigate the risk and situation. Yes, sometimes you do something, but ultimately it's arranged by Krishna. You did something, you say you did something your own, by mistake, uh, and un unintentionally, but there's a purpose behind it. You, you may think it was unintentional, but Krishna had an arrangement. Somehow Krishna arranged these things to happen, to teach us, to prepare us for the difficulties. That even we, of course, we're, we're always trying to avoid difficulties, but they come anyway, unintentionally. You have to, you have to be ready for them. We don't want old age. We don't want disease, but it comes anyway. So the, these difficulties, these things, the calamities which come, we're, of course we're trying to avoid them, everyone's trying to avoid them, but still they will come. So when they come, we have to recognize this is Krishna's plan. He's getting me ready to leave this world. We have to take more shelter of Krishna when there are difficulties, when these things come on us, 
it's a sign for us from Krishna. We should say, thank you Krishna. We don't say, why Krishna? Oh Krishna, why you did this to me? We should say, thank you Krishna. And call out the holy name of Krishna. Take more shelter. Come closer to Krishna. The more you accept the difficulties and the dangers, the more you get the mercy of Krishna. Prabhupada went to America, no money, living with crazy people. He's accepted so many difficulties to please Krishna for the service of Krishna. Of course, if we can avoid, th if we can avoid them, you know, we, 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 we usually do try to avoid calamities. As I we don't like these things, but they come anyway. You cannot avoid them. You want, you want a job, you want to keep the job. Course of time, the company closes. No job. Finished. Everybody has to go some other place. You don't want these things, but they happen. And we have to prepare to take shelter of Krishna. Krishna is preparing us to detach us from this material world. If, if you're attached to this material world, you'll come back. If you come back to this world, then we failed. You know we have that one book, Coming Back. Did you ever read that book, Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation? The last chapter in the book, don't come back. Do you want to come back next life? Come back, Barena? <laughs> no, no, we want to go back to our real home, right? The Param Dham, Lord Krishna is waiting for us to come there, to his abode. It's our real home. Our home is not Kerala or Tamil or any other place in this material world. Our real home is Goloka, the spiritual world. We have to go there. And the Lord is waiting there for us to go back to Him. And so we should be planning how to get there, how to get out from this place. So many births we have had taking birth and dying again and again, birth and dying, again. sometimes a dog, sometimes a tree, sometimes a bird. Now we have this human body. We're very fortunate. We have the human body and we have the association of devotees. In the association of devotees, you can cross over the ocean of birth and death. That is the real goal of life to get out from this world. So Jaipataka Swami Maharaj and all the spiritual teachers, they're all encouraging us, become Krishna conscious. Give up the attachment to this world. You're not the body. You're spirit souls. You're part and parcel of Lord Krishna and you belong in the kingdom of God. We want to go there. And so we have, to, we have to get ready. You have to accept some little difficulties. What you think is a little difficulty, actually it's a mercy. Ultimately if it's a mercy. If you take it as an advantage to become Krishna conscious. So we have to say, thank you, Krishna. One devotee, he was distributing books in the airport, you know. Sometimes, sometimes people are not very nice, you know, when you distribute books. So the devotee was distributing a book and he offered a book to one man and the man just punched him in the face. What did the devotee do? He said, oh, thank you, Krishna. You know, he could have fought with the man, he, could, he, was, a, he was not a, a weakling, he was a strong m devotee. But he thought, I don't want to make a scene, I don't want to get a lot of trouble. 
and he, he just said, thank you, Krishna. When we meet calamities, we have to say, thank you, Krishna. This is an opportunity to chant the holy name with more feeling. When, we, when we're in difficulties, our chanting will have more feeling, more intensity. So, of course, Mataji didn't want calamities. <laughs> but if she wants to chant the holy name with more feeling, the calamities will help. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Bhiknibina Sang Narsing Swami Maharaj ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. So we will chant one time Hare Krishna to thank Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare.